Hello, welcome to day 120 of my art development series. If this is your first day here, my name is Angela Rem, and this is a series that I'm doing where I document my everyday art process. And so far I've made 120 days of that process, so basically four months of watching me grow as an artist. And I actually only upload on Monday to Friday, so I also have you know all those additional weekends of art practice. So I think it's really about six months of art growth that I've kind of documented, um, which, is, which is kind of incredible. Um, well, at least I find it incredible. I hope that you, you the viewing audience, does too. Uh, so today I'm actually in the middle of doing a self-portrait. So if you go backwards to day 119, you'll kind of see the introduction to this. Uh, but in summary, I'm doing a self-portrait from a mirror. Um, and the way that I'm kind of approaching this is I have my pad up on an easel, my drawing pad up on an easel, and then there's actually a mirror in front of my face. And I'm drawing in such a way where all I have to do is move my eyes. And, and I can keep my head in a fixed position and just move my eyes back and forth between seeing the mirror and then seeing what I'm drawing on the pad. Um, and so today is the first day that I decided to, so, so yesterday I finished showing the block in, um, and then today was the day that I added tone to this drawing. Um, and so I've actually been experimenting a lot recently with tone. So actually, uh, if you go back to day 100, I remember the day exactly, I start this like fundamentals video where I talk about adding tone to sim simple shapes. Um, and that, that particular exercise that I did several times was honestly shockingly good at helping me better understand how to play in tone and value. Um, I have never before underrated a exercise so much as drawing just spheres, eggs, cylinders, cubes, pyramids. Um, those drawings I remember took me as long as any other drawing, and I think I learned you know three times what I've learned from anything else. So you know if you've never tried an exercise that I've done, I know this is about self portraits, but if you've never tried an exercise that I've done, please please try drawing. Go back to day one hundred and try drawing the the simple shapes. <clears throat> but with that being said, uh, I'm adding tone to this, and I'm doing it in the same fashion that I did then, um, but in in slightly a different way. So the way that I had this set up, I had myself set up, the lighting that I was seeing in life was actually not the greatest, um, and not how I wanted to pick, not the lighting that I wanted to pick or select for my self-portrait. So instead what I did is I actually went back to a master copy that I did of Kira Cole, and if you go to my Instagram, you can kind of see the drawing that I'm, I'm talking about. It's one of the recent drawings that I did. Um, and I actually decided to steal the lighting from that drawing and use it as the lighting in my self-portrait. Um, and there's a few interesting effects. So first of all, uh, when you're doing that, you started getting into this territory of like making up the lighting a little bit, um, which has strengths and weaknesses. So the strengths of this are, the first one is, if you understand the planes of the face and you're making up the lighting, then you can be super accurate in terms of adding tone where you want. So in the sense that if I know like my, my face is you know, kind of like a box, then I know this side of the box is all gonna be dark and the front side of the box is gonna be lighter and then this will be like the lightest side. And I can engineer that since I'm doing it kind of from imagination or I'm just kind of like superimposing a lighting style of my choice. Um, and you know, I think this is like best seen with the nose actually because the nose, you know, is very nicely has this side planes, right? And then the top plane. And so I, I know immediately how to light the nose and I can't get um, distracted at all. Like a strength here is I don't get distracted by the actual lighting that I'm seeing. The weakness is you don't get distracted by the actual lighting that you're seeing. So you don't get any interesting reflected light, you don't get any you know, bounce light, um, you, know, you, you risk losing some three-dimensionality because you're just kind of, you know, you, you're doing a very engineered, very manufactured version of light. So maybe not risking as much three-dimensionality, but risking, um, you know, you're risking some of the realism factor, let's say, of the, of the drawing. Um, so, you know, these were things that didn't particularly bother me, but I also did try, like, I went with this lighting source and kind of tried to combine it with reality, what I was seeing. Um, so an example of that actually is that in the previous drawing, I had not really picked out any highlights that were kind of on this like temple side of the head in shadow. Um, but in this drawing, I actually did because I started seeing some of them in real life. Even though, you know, the lighting was not as intense, um, I could kind of understand like how the light was reflecting and how it was bouncing off. Um, so I tried to do kind of this like surrogate method, let's say, or like ensemble method of combining together uh, the lighting that I'm seeing in the image and then the lighting that I was seeing in reality. Um, and I like this approach actually. In the end, I kind of, I thought it was kind of nice. Um, one thing that I want to say is, 
I completely lost the likeness in this in this drawing. Um, in the sense that if you stick around to the end of this drawing, watch me through the end of this drawing today, you will see that I it does not look like me. Um, it looks kind of like me, like there's elements of me in it. Like it's like oh this, it, you know I can see where it's going and how it's trying to be Andrew, but it's not right. Um, and, and you'll you'll really get that at the end of it. And <clears throat> this is like I'm going to talk about this a lot more in the next video where we talk about capturing the likeness. Um, but this is part of the process of, of getting a likeness. So even though I was pretty happy with how it looked at the block-in stage, as I started to own t add tone, you're kind of always constantly like losing and finding and losing and finding the likeness. It, the, the likeness itself is so much more like anything else that you have, where you're, you know, I always talk about this idea of like pushing and pulling values or pushing and pulling shapes in the sense that I'm, I'm always putting something down on the paper and then erasing it and then putting something more, erasing it and like trying to find the perfect, the perfect line or the perfect tone and like it, it's really this push-pull process where you're constantly, you know, two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. And it turns out the likeness is exactly like this. Um, I mean, it turns out, I, I knew this ahead of time, but everything is like this. Um, so, you know, by the end of this, by the end of day one, I had a block in where I actually had a nice likeness. By the end of day two, I added some tone that I really liked actually, what I would call some pretty nice tone. Um, but I would say that I've lost any likeness that was there previously. Um, and then so what I will be doing tomorrow, I'm kind of teasing this for day three, for day 121, is that I will be trying to like reclaim the likeness. And we can talk about, you know, some of the principles or some of the philosophies that you can go through uh, for trying to reclaim a, li a likeness. Uh, but I think that's going to be everything for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video um, for day 120 and we will see each other again tomorrow for day 121.